What do you think the common aerospace medicine misconceptions are from both the civilian and the military side? You know, because I've talked about on my channel, you know, make them tell you no, because I was one of those dudes that I'm not an astronaut. I didn't have perfect vision. You know, I wasn't, you know, somebody that you think automatically become a fighter pilot. What do you think the in today's world, the most common misconceptions are that you see from both the civilian and the military side that, you know, you want to address? I think one of the biggest ones I'm seeing now is the AME is that, um, you know, there was this, the, the culture is exactly what you're, you're describing where it's like, Hey, you know, don't, don't tell them anything. They don't ask you, you know, um, don't disclose that. And I think that, I think that really worked well before everything's gone digital and now all the systems are talking to one another. And so we're seeing, I don't know if you guys heard about like the 5,000 pilots that are under investigation yeah. from the oh, FAA. Yeah. They're all, all the, all the folks coming from military and you know, they were, there was a culture for a long time. It's like, you know, when you fill out your VA disability paperwork, you, uh, you know, your incentive is to maximize your disability. You, it, you know, you acknowledge all these conditions when you fill out the FAA paperwork, you know, you're, you're the healthiest guy in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the room and you don't disclose anything. And so I think for a long time that, that, that worked and those systems didn't talk. And then now the system's digitalized and it's pretty easy for the VA records to communicate with the FAA records and vice versa. And so when they started to do a big review of this, they saw lots of discrepancies that you, as you may, maybe expect. And then Congress got word of it and, you know, it became a couple specific politicians like um, key project was to fix this. And they were concerned about flight safety. And so they're putting lots of pressure on the FAA and giving them uh, funding to fix this problem. And so essentially now the systems are generally always talking. Um, and we can also, they're also, you know, when they do an audit, they can pull, you know, when controlled substance were pres prescribed, court records, you know, driving records, all this stuff becomes somewhat more accessible. And so the, the time when it was, was wise to maybe not disclose things, I think is, is past for the, the, the most part, because the quickest way I've seen to getting a denial from the FAA is to, to try to lie about something or not disclose things. I think in large, large majority of cases, um, when things are disclosed, you're going to get certified. You're just going to have to jump through some hoops. So there's going to be some pain. There's going to be some expense there. There's going to be some going to different evaluations and stuff, but you know, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's, you know, substance use stuff, DUIs, mental health stuff, PTSD, antidepressants like large majority 95 to 99 percent of people get approved get certified so, um, so that's those, the stuff right now the, what you just listed it's not like musculoskeletal you know knee joint pain stuff like that it's mostly like mental health and drugs or those are the big stuff. ones the mental yeah. health stuff and the and and drugs are, are definitely drug and alcohol incidences are the big ones um also because they're so they're so easy to find and, and track um, you know, other things, cardiac things, um, any neurologic things, obviously, you know, if you had a, a seizure or, um, loss of consciousness, unexplained loss of consciousness, even if that's like a fainting spell or head injury, most of those though are going to get certified. They just, again, again, it's going to be some hoops to jump through. Mm -hmm. Um, the musculoskeletal stuff is generally not an issue. I mean, very rare. You know, if you have a, a guy with such bad back pain or neck pain that they're, you know, getting injections all the time. They're on, they're requiring pain pills. They're like consulting neurosurgeons, like those, those people like that might have a, have an effect. Cause you can't be on certain medicines, but I mean, if most people, especially from the fighter community and pilot community have, you know, aches and pains and definitely like the, the nerve stuff from like, you know, all the G forces that's super common. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I would <clears throat> move her. I, I think you could agree. I, like even at Navy or air force, I always felt, my uh, uh, relationship with the with the doc was a lot more open. You know, I, I go to the my to get my first class medical. It's like, how you doing? I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, here you go. You know, pay up on yeah. the way out. But you know, yeah. I always felt like, uh, at least in the military, you could almost off the record sometimes <laughs> talk about some stuff, or you know, in a workaround kind of way. Yeah, uh, to get help, you know, like I still, I mean, we talk about this stuff on the show a lot, but like, I, I'm not comfortable telling my AME anything <laughs> other, other than where do I pay <laughs> or sign? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you're, I mean, everything you're saying is very, is, is very accurate. And I think the FAA is aware of that. And they're trying to change that. It's just different though. And, you know, 
being a flight surgeon, I, my entire career, you know, there's two actually, actually, I don't think I mentioned this before and you guys may or may not be aware, but there's kind of two different flight surgeons, at least in the Air Force. I'm not sure how the Navy side goes, but you have the ones that are owned by the med group where you're reporting to another doctor somewhere in the clinic structure or the medical group. And then you have the ones that are embedded in the fighter squadrons or in the squadrons. In my entire career, I was an SME, which is the squadron medical element, the one embedded in the, in the, in the unit. So I was in the A-10 unit for a year, and then I was in the F-16 unit for four years. So my, my commander was the squadron commander pilot of the fighter squadron. And it's a very different type of like dynamic, right? It was usually the roll calls where I'd hear the mo- I'd get the most consults, you know, <laughs> you know, you're hanging out at the roll call and everybody's like, you know, like comfort levels down, like, Hey doc, like, what about if the guy had this, you know? And, and it's cool though, because you're, you're, you're in the unit, you're friends with these guys, you're flying with these guys, you know, you're, you're going on temporary deployments with them, you know, you're taking care of their family members. You are like their doc versus like in the FAA world, the AME is just some old guy you go to once every six to 12 months. Uh, and, and all he's looked at is the person that can potentially ruin your career, you know? And so the, the, the business that I've started, the go flight medicine clinic and business that I've started, I'm really trying to bring the level of, um, of care and kind of almost like concierge level of, of medical advice and consultation that I learned from like being embedded in the fighter squadron to the civilian aviators, because I, I recognize that as like a, um, a, a huge gap. And I think that in the end, the FAA loses when pilots aren't feeling comfortable disclosing things, right? If there's someone you can talk to and, and like, so I always say like, Hey, flight safety is important to me. If there's something that you come to, to me with, and I'm concerned about, you know, your passengers, you and your family, like, I don't want to be the last person that did the exam. And then you have a mishap and now, you know, yeah. your wife's a widow, you know? Yeah. So flight safety is important, but at the same time, you know, there's a lot of things that are open for interpretation and I want to also have my patients to come to me. I want them to know that I'm going to advocate for them. And I'm also going to consider not just flight safety alone, but also, you know, the fact that this is your passion, your vocation, your, your livelihood, it's your paycheck, you know, and try to find the, the balance between those things. So yeah, that's my approach. Well, and it's tough, you know, like you were talking about, just continuity, right? When you go do your FAA medical, you've got to go to the website with Med Express, right? And, mm-hmm. and do it. It doesn't, so it can talk to every system in the world to find out if I'm lying, but it's like doing a tax return. Yeah. I have to tell it and it tells, <clears throat> you know, they come back and tell me if I was lying, if I forgot, you know, because it's like, yeah. go back three years and tell us yeah. like, I'm like, well, wait a minute. I told you this last time. Well, we need to know it again. It's like, well, how come you can't pull it from the last one I just did? And I've got to remember what I told you the last time because I forgot, I, you know, it, yeah, it's a test. It's not, it's a test. Yeah. it doesn't remember. I think, I think it will. I, I don't think that that's, an, I don't know how intentional that is versus just like, you know, it's a government owned system. They have dark, cause I've seen some, <laughs> I've seen some movement. Like for example, last May, they just opened it up for the first time that now we can digitally upload documents to it before that everything had to be mailed in. So, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, it's moving a little bit. I agree. Like that's the whole thing. I've actually provided that exact same feedback when I go to the, the refresher courses, when I talk to, you know, the, the flight surgeons above me, I'm like, Hey, do you think you guys are going to do this? So like stuff gets imported in so that there's another yeah. thing is like, I can't see um, previous physicals that were done by different AMEs. Hmm. So I always save that stuff, but I can't see it yeah. um, when they put it in. So it's just like, I think those are more, I don't think that this is intentional. I just think it's just a, a kind of a little bit of a clunky system that is slowly improving and becoming modernized, but at the speed of a federal government and not like a lean, uh, like, like Silicon Valley tech company. Right. Well, and that's the thing. It's like, I'm not, I'm not trying to hide anything, but dude, I don't, I don't remember three years ago, yeah. you know, I saw a physical therapist on the 26th. Like it's so specific. But yeah. then I told my, my AME that year and I'm like, okay, well, I've already mentioned that. And I'm like, whoa, ho, 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 you didn't talk about this. It's like, well, we already talked about it. Why am I talking Busted. about this? Again? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck flying, buddy. 